We got the slides on this uh, just normal Go Build a chassis, and we got it all wired up and everything. Well, we got the slides on yesterday, and then today we got it wired up. Uh, technically, we got it programmed, yeah. but yeah. we didn't do any testing, and so the problem, we believe, is that I put a 312 uh, r RPM motor on it, and then it was programmed for an actual, like, 1,000 RPM motor. The problem, I believe, I, I'm not a programmer, but I think what happened is that it was trying to rotate, like, the mount that the 1,000 RPM motor needed to rotate, so it was just rotating way too much for how much we were pushing the stick, and it was going pretty fast, so it would just, uh, it just moved way too much and too fast, and so we ended up breaking the printed part that held the spring, and we launched it into orbit, pretty much. Flashback. I, we just launched a I barely, just, I, I barely oh. touched the stick and it just started going. End of flashback. So we have this uh, contraption. That it's meant for riding the cones. So the idea for this one is that we'll be able to rotate the motor and have this rotated up until it uh, and push it down onto the cone and then we'll be able to back the robot up to be able to write the cone hopefully and we'd be able to turn around and pick it up mm -hmm. if we end up with a cone that's like on its side which we think could be pretty likely. We got a holonomic uh, chassis going. This one actually works pretty well. It, it's pretty fast and it runs around quite well. And it has the cutout in the board so that, that matches the cone so that it can kind of push the cones around if we want to. And hopefully we'd be able to use that to like center onto a cone and then pick it up with the grabber if we need to. So that could be nice. So this one works well. Then we have our other holonomic chassis that we got going here. This one, instead of being a laser cut wood board, is made mostly out of GoBuilder parts and a wood board for electronics. So this one we made by taking apart one of our older robots from last season. And so this one, we took these uh, uh, low U channel, uh, not low U, regular U channels with motors in them. And so this had the whole motor like setup going. So we, we were able to just take them off of the other robot and then, uh, yeah, pretty much just slap them onto this, slap some low U channels on it so that it like stays upright. Because you can see it's like, that's how it is. So this, we ran it. Oh. Yeah, just, oh yeah, the, prob the problem is that the not all the wheels are able to touch the ground. You try to drive it and then one of the wheels wouldn't be on the ground and so it would just, like, <laughs> it wouldn't go the right direction uh, consistently. We actually need to make sure all four wheels will actually be able to be on the ground. Yeah, and we're thinking about doing a three-wheel wheel design so that we don't have to worry about making all the wheels on the ground because it'll just be three. So you have to have three points of contact. And then, can we move another robot onto the frame? Or move the frame? That's fine. And then, so this, we modified a, a strafer chassis so that it's uh, a lot smaller. Uh, do we have a normal strafer chassis? Uh, yeah. yeah, here we have a normal strafer chassis. It has the old wheels, but it's the same size as the regular one. Yeah, so it's only 16 inches wide, and I don't know how long it is, but it's probably like... 16 or maybe 24 okay so it's 24 millimeters shorter in length as well so this one it made it a lot easier to drive around on the field with it because we did have this one driving right yeah we had it driving yesterday i believe and so that makes it a lot easier to drive around on the field and so we're definitely going to think that we're going to try to go for a relatively small bot this year so that we can drive through the junctions easily and so that was a good test we might even use this for Competition, maybe, if we decide we like it over a holonomic. We also made a couple of grabber designs. So this one, which uh, was made by one of our, this one was made by one of our new members who isn't here right now. He had to go, but it uses a servo to power two of the gecko, go build a gecko wheels, and so it's fairly light. It's lighter than you'd think it would be, even though it has the heavy gecko wheels on it. Hopefully we can find an alternative to the Gecko wheels and make it a lot lighter. But uh, it seems to work pretty well, I believe. I believe it was tested. And that was pretty good. We also have 
this one, which we had hooked up to a motor, and this one picked up the cones pretty well. The, the way it works is that the wheels are counter-rotating, and so the cone, you slide it onto the cone, and then the wheels uh, rotate, and it, like, sucks it up like this. And then you can stop rotating the wheels, and it, it, it drops it. And so that's the concept that all, all of these work on. Then we got this one going, I think, right? Yep. Okay. We got the center grab one going. So what it does is it, uh, it goes into the cone, and then it can expand out, and then it holds onto it, and then it, you can also drop it. Now why don't you hold it up to the camera and do it? Yep. Yeah, it's a little blurry, which is unfortunate. I don't know how to focus it. Oh, wait. Quick explanation. So, the servo here on the top spins the shaft here, which has a cam inside of this black TPU filament piece. When that cam rotates, it hits this and expands it out. Um, and then the cone on the bottom also helps to align up with a uh, cone, making it easier to get near the walls as well. Yeah, so that way it like centers itself on the cone so that you don't have to be perfect with your alignment. All right. We also have a claw design, which we're going to try to use with the uh, slides. It's, uh, can we move the camera over here? So it's, it's fairly basic. It just has two servos attached to some arms. We have a 3D printed piece that holds some foam to cushion it. So the idea is that, can you move the servos? Yep. It, uh, you get up to the cone, and then it squeezes on it, and then you can hold it. It works better when you actually have the servos powered. You can't just, you kind of have to actually apply force the whole time. You can't just, like, yep. power it and then let it go. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> put, it, put it down. All right, good. So that, this one works quite well. It's pretty light, and we had it done the first day, I believe, or at least uh, close enough to done. And so we were able to try to get it on second day. So that, that's good. Was there anything else? Oh, yeah, we did. Okay, we took... Our Rover Ruckus robot, which is capable of lifting up to the top junction. And we took our... Okay, yeah. We took our, our intake, which looked pretty much like this already. And we repurposed it. We made a few adjustments to be able to rotate and pick up the cones and then rotate back and drop it off. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, if we were to get this one all wired up, we would be able to pick it up. And is there anything else you want to say? And I think that's everything we did. Yeah. Um, well, let's point it back up at us so that they can actually see us. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, up more. Yeah, there you go. Thank you for watching our stream. Hopefully you enjoyed. And uh, that'll be it. Bye. 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 Can you actually stop it, please? Stop it. I, that'd be preferred. Oh. Now it's going to stop. I don't really know what I'm talking about.